Hello again there folks, welcome back to my channel. I'm the Lone Adventurer. Thank you very much for stumbling your way upon my channel and joining me for this adventure. Today I'm going to be continuing my playthrough using Single Sheet Adventure from Perplexing Ruins with the Cairn rule set, which is a simple rule set from Yochai Gal which at the moment is receiving a second edition, which is probably worth keeping an eye out for. If you haven't seen part one of my playthrough, there'll be a link up in the corner of the screen right about now and in the description down below. If you want to get yourself a copy of this, there is a link down in the description to the itch.io page. I know a couple of people clicked on that having watched the previous video and they were unable to find this particular version of the sheet. Now this version has a stat block for a character which is more or less for the Cairn rule set, but it isn't quite for the Cairn rule set. I believe the designer was uh, playing a game based on the Cairn rule set when he was putting this sheet together. And so it's it's sort of a, a little bit, um, it's kind of for Cairn, but not really for Cairn. And you would have noticed in the first video that I was a little confused by the presence of this uh, uh, decreasing dice chart here. And I was also a little bit confused by the fact that the armor box has AC written above it. And the fact that we've got this experiences thing. And in fact, there's a level for that matter, because I couldn't find any details relating to levelling up. But anyway, the, the designer made the decision to remove this version of the sheet, is the short version of the story. You can still get the system agnostic sheet, which has got all of the fantastic tables, uh, slightly rearranged, so some that are on the back are on the front, um, bits and pieces like that. But this section over here is blank, and you can just drop in the stats from whatever game you want. So I think that's probably better. So with that said, I think we need to crack on. Our character Sybil is over here at High something Manor? High Haven Manor. She has discovered the location of the bandit camp and needs to head back to town in order to uh, give that information to the individual who uh, sent us on the quest, who was a halfling soldier called Storn. And then at that point, my thinking is that Sybil is probably going to insist on coming to the bandit camp with Storn and his soldiers, and hopefully having an opportunity to get a bit of uh, combat action going on. But first we need to make our way back to the town. So I would say we can probably continue on day three. So in day three we snuck into the manor, spoke to Lady Rebecca, found out where the bandit camp is located, but I doubt that took a whole day. So we can also crack on the way we came back into the grassland and see whether anything happens en route. So we're gonna roll on the explore table. I was hesitating there because if it's a location that we have been to already, then surely we are not exploring. But my feeling is that something can happen or you can come across something you didn't come across last time you were moving through that terrain. So we're gonna roll again to see if anything happens. Three, nothing happens. Okay, feels like we need some kind of basic like camping table to see whether anything happens during the night or something like that. But uh, we don't have that on that sheet. So I think we're gonna skip it. So that's day three. We move back into the grasslands and then it's day four and Sybil is gonna be moving back into the town of Thorn Valley. She is going to go back and meet with Storn, the halfling soldier, and tell Storn where the bandit camp 
is. So I think probably at this point we should establish where the bandit camp is on the map. So I would say we don't need to roll for a quest here, but we could use the uh, quest uh, location mechanic here, which is to roll d6 to determine which direction and d4 to determine how far away. And I think we've probably got a locations table. I'm trying to see whether we've got some kind of table that can establish sort of the nature of the bandit camp, like where it is. We've got this ruin table here with six possible options. That might be the best option. Yeah, let's let's do that. Okay, so we're going to roll d6 and d4 to work out where this bandit camp is. We've got five and four, so that's good. It's quite far away. So we're going to have to explore a few hexes to get there. So what we're doing is directly up if we were to roll a one. So going around one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So a roll of five means the bandit camp is down in this direction. And it's going to be four away because we rolled a four on the d4. One, two, three, four. So it's going to be in this hex here. And I think we will roll on this ruin table to establish what kind of location this bandit camp is is we're not going to have an estate though because uh i don't want one two is a tower okay so the bandit camp is in some kind of tower could we use the settlements names to roll up a name for the tower maybe i'm overusing this table but it's nice to have names for things i think we could give it a go uh, so let's roll once to see which column we're using. We're going to use the last column and then we're going to use the green for the prefix and the purple for the suffix. 3, 5 gives us a little ridge. I'm going to give myself one more option actually. So it could be little ridge or it could be white mound. So we have white mound, so we're going to make this white mound tower right so we have gone to Storm. we have told Storm. sybil has told Storm that the bandits have camped out in white mound tower this is where they are probably they took the tower over from whoever the previous residents were so quite possibly if we're able to clear out the bandits, then the current residents, the previous residents of the tower might also be grateful if they're still alive. But we've got to get there first. And then when we get there, we have got to defeat the bandits that are there. So the question is, I guess, are we going as a sort of party? Um... Are there going to be other soldiers? Maybe, I was thinking about this, the fact that Storn is a halfling. Maybe this is a village that has a significant halfling population. And so, although you might think that halflings are less likely to have soldiers, I would imagine they have some soldiers, so I think I'm probably going to be going with them, with a band of soldiers to this tower. And we're going to be travelling together. I don't want to think too much about these mechanics. I might just say that there's going to be three. So there's going to be Storm plus two more soldiers. And we're going to travel together. Actually thinking about it, I'm going to sort of chance my arm. I'm a... Sybil is a quite seasoned fighter, I would think. Quite a high strength and dexterity um, score. And a hunter. So really, the halfling soldiers should be quite grateful 
of her presence. We are a boon. We will help. So I would say probably I should, now that I think about it, Sybil should probably be getting a reward for having gone and got the information. So I'm going to say yes, we are going to get a reward. I think I'm just going to roll a dice and say that's how many coins we're getting. One. One silver coin. I guess it is not a wealthy village. That sucks. All right, so we're getting one coin, taking me up to 12 coins. And we're going to offer our services, but it'll have to be for more than one coin. Sybil is going to say to Storm, you've got a long journey to White Mound Tower, and when you get there... You're going to have to fight a whole bunch of bandits. Do you want us to come along and help? Or, or rather, are you willing to reward me if I were to come and help you? Now, given the fact that we have already helped Storn, I'm going to roll on the oracle table and I'm going to add on two. So there's quite a decent chance that we will get a reward. 2 plus 2 is 4, which is yes, but. So yes, Storm welcomes our company on this quest, but he cannot offer us monetary reward. So I guess there's no money in it for us. So I'm going to say that yes, but there's no money in it for us. However, Storm can put in a good word with the local healer because we know Thorn Valley has a uh, a well-known healer who lives here. So Storm will put in a good word with the healer and therefore when we seek the services of the healer um, we will uh, not have any problems getting those services or maybe we will receive those services at a reduced rate. I'll decide when the time comes. I'm just going to make a note of that. So I have written that Storn agrees, is unable to offer financial reward but offers to put in a good word with the local healer and I've rolled up a race and a name and gender for the healer. It is a halfling and she is called Vorneth. So we'll think about that later. Now, this being day four means I have to consume a ration. I think that there is a good chance that because I completed this quest for Storm and because Tolkien has convinced me that all halflings love food, that Storm is willing to feed me this evening and uh, offer me a place to stay. And so I do not need to use one of my rations at this time. However, I would like to purchase some additional rations. I'm not sure if Cairn has costs of things i'm just looking for rations on here three days worth of rations is 10 gold pieces that is a lot i've only got 11 gold pieces i'm gonna chance my arm and try a roll shall i do that i'm gonna roll to see whether the fact that i um, word travels fast in this village, and let's see whether the fact that I am helping the village out sort out this bandit problem, does it mean that the local village shop is willing to offer me a little bit of a discount? Two, no. Okay, fine. Well, I've only got, well, I've got two rations, um... I'm going to be travelling with the halflings, so I think I will possibly be able to eat some of their food, if I'm being cheeky. So I guess I will save my money for now. Also, I'm a hunter, so maybe I'll be able to do some hunting. We can give that a go, I'm sure. So there we go. Day four over, I would say. 
We spend the night with Storm. Presumably he's got a guest room with a normal sized bed. Not normal, that's not the right word, is it? Offensive to halflings everywhere. A larger person sized bed. And we'll wake up the next day refreshed and ready to begin our journey to the tower. Along with our companions, which is going to be three halflings, maybe I should decide on their stats. So I think we need stats for Storm and then um, the other two halfling soldiers, one and two. Okay, so not having played any Cairn, I don't really know what's a weak character or what's a strong character, so I've sort of based them roughly on where I'm at. The soldiers have got a strength and a dex of 10 and a will of 5. Same HP as me, same armour as me. Uh, Storm, I've made a bit more powerful. Strength of 12, dex of 14, will of 6. And the same HP, same armour class, same armour rather. And to keep things simple, I'm saying they've all got a dagger, which means they're all doing D6 damage. So these are my companions for this quest. So I guess we now have a party of sorts. We've got Sybil and we've got Storm, the, the halfling soldier captain. And then the soldiers, the, uh, the, the, the regular soldiers as well. Right, so we need to move day five. And we're going to be moving into this hex here. Two means uh, nothing happens, uneventful. We need to know what type of terrain it is. One is grasslands. I think my grassland symbol is just going to be that. Guess we could roll on the weather table. Five means there's some light precipitation, a little bit of rain. And on to day six, we'll move into the next one. It does feel like I could probably make some kind of camping uh, table to use alongside this. And also it feels like maybe it would be nice to have some kind of getting lost mechanic. But obviously it being on two sheets of paper, everything is quite uh, pared down and straightforward. So we're going to move into the next one. Explore die. Five, a discovery. Cool. So over here... We have some discoveries. Actually, first let's roll to see what the terrain is. So we need to use this new terrain table now to see whether the terrain is going to remain the same or if we're going to have new terrain. Two means the terrain will remain the same, so it's more grassland. And what's this discovery going to be? Well, over here we have three different types of discovery table. We've got unnatural discoveries, we've got natural discoveries, ruins, settlements, evidence, and passive. Not too sure why that one is labelled passive, but uh, let's see what happens. So green to establish which type of discovery, and purple to, dis to establish the discovery itself. Two, six... So that's a natural discovery, and it's a ravine. That's pretty cool. I might draw in a little ravine. I think I will name it, just because I like naming everything. Rock Haven. Well, this is settlement names, and it's not really working for me. I do like the idea of naming it. I'm not sure I have any kind of tables anywhere that might help me name the ravine. Well, I didn't find anything really perfect for the job, but I spotted the sandbox generator and thought I might have a flick through that. We've got a table of nouns here, so maybe we'll just roll a couple of times on this and see if we get anything that sounds a bit ravine -y. 
Not that it really matters. But I did notice that there's a towers section in here. So we might use this to uh, dictate a little bit of detail about the tower when we get there. But let's let's roll on this table and see what we get. 50, hell, that's nice. 14, boar, why not? Let's just go with that, shall we? Hell, boar, ravine. So we come across this ravine and one of the soldiers says, aha, this must be Hellbor Ravine. Maybe there's some kind of halfling folk tale told in this area of some terrifying hellish boar that lives in the ravine. But that's all good. Now I suppose the question is, are we able to make our way down into the ravine or do we have to go round the ravine? So that's the question I'm going to ask. Can we make our way down into the ravine and up the other side and therefore not have to go around it? Four. Yes, but. Okay, so I guess that means we can make our way down into the ravine, but something bad happens there. So I find myself thinking either one of us slips and injures themselves or maybe something does live in the ravine. Maybe there is a boar that lives here. So let's ask that, shall we? We'll go back to the standard oracle and ask, as we are making our way down into the ravine in order to get across to the other side, do we encounter a dangerous boar that has inspired the name of this ravine? One, no, and. Okay, so no, and. What positive thing could happen in the ravine? I'm not too sure. Sometimes I'm a little lacking in imagination. Maybe, if you're getting to this point, and of the video, and you think there's something really obvious that could have been the and in the ravine, uh, let me know in the comments below. But I'm just going to take it as a no. We do not encounter the crazed boar in the ravine, and we safely make our way up the other side and are able to camp for the night next to the ravine. So I'll just make a quick note about that day. So I've written that we make our way down through Hellbore Ravine, camping on the far side. Now, we should be consuming a ration, but actually maybe that was the and. Maybe, uh, no, we didn't encounter the wild boar, and we did encounter some, some rabbits that we were able to uh, uh, capture and have for our evening meal and so because of that I'm avoiding using one of my own personal rations. So that's day six on to day seven and we're getting close to the tower now so we're going to go into this next location let's check to see whether the terrain is changing. Four, no that's the same terrain, explore die for an omen, I'm not really sure how to handle omens if I'm honest, and three it is an animal omen. What does that mean? I don't really know. Again, I'm not very good at interpreting these omen roles. I think I'd be tempted to change the explore die a little bit, either to omit the omen roles or to decrease the likelihood of them. So the grassland continues. It was grassland around the ravine, Hellbore Ravine, and it's grassland here as well. The day of uneventful travel. Day eight, we are reaching the tower. 
All right, so this is the day where we're finally going to be doing some combat, I think. We are at the tower. I'm just going to turn to the tower section of the sandbox generator. So each tower has at least a ground level, an above ground level, and a top level. A tower may also have underground levels. I don't think we're going to have underground levels. Um, let's just roll for above ground levels. How many above ground levels are we going to have? Six gives us three. So we've got the three standard levels. Do I want to roll on any of these tables? All of a sudden I'm not so sure. We could have some details, I suppose. And then we could roll on level usage. That could be cool. Although maybe the usage doesn't matter that much, given the fact that it, the tower has been taken over by these bandits. But let's roll for a couple of details of the tower. One is nothing. Five is nothing. And 20 is turrets. So the tower's got some turrets. And then what is the appearance inside the tower? 10, well decorated. A well decorated tower. I'm going to assume that the bandits have taken the tower over from the rightful residence. And I'm curious to know whether the residents of the tower are still nearby. So I'm going to ask the oracle. Six, yes. The resident of the tower is still by, and six gives us yes and. So I think that means that the previous resident of the tower will be able to help us in this situation. So they're going to be keen to help us uh, regain control of the tower from them, clear out the bandits, and therefore return the tower to them. So I guess the question is, who is the rightful owner of the tower? So we could use this character's table here. We're going to roll for the race. Five is a gnome type. Is a magic user, a gnome magician's tower. This is perfect. Um, we'll ignore financial. Actually, we won't ignore financial, because if they're rich, they might give us a reward. Five, rich. A rich gnome magician. Loving it. Let's roll to get a name. So we've got three columns. Middle column, male or female. Male. So with these rolls, I'm just splitting it. If there's three, then it's one, two, three, four, five, six. If there's two, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So a roll of four gave us a male name. And the name itself is Duncan. Good magician name, Duncan. So actually, we do have an NPC section, and we didn't... We haven't been filling that out. So I'm going to put Storm on here. And then we had... What was the name of the... Um, what was the name of the noblewoman? I'm sure I wrote it down somewhere. Rebecca. And now we've got Duncan. Duncan the Gnome Magician. And I've written that near the tower we encounter Duncan the Wealthy Gnome Magician. He offers us a reward if we clear the bandits from his tower. So we know that the tower has three levels. Uh, what's the name of this tower again? White Mound Tower. And we need to decide how many bandits we have got to deal with here. And again, I don't really know how combat goes in Cairn. So I don't want to make it too hard or too easy. I'm pretty sure there is a section on making monsters or enemies so we need to give them HP armor and then strength dex and will 
and then weapon uh, dice. So ability scores, 3 is deficient, 6 is weak, 10 is average, 14 is noteworthy, and 18 is legendary. Give average creatures 3 HP, give hardy ones 6 HP, and serious threats 10 HP. Well, I've only got 3 HP myself. Hopefully we won't just immediately die. That would be rubbish. Let's see. I think there's going to be one bandit like uh, uh, leader and then let's say we'll do d4 to see how many other bandits there are three so we're going to have four bandits in total three normal bandits and one bandit leader i'm going to write up some stats for them here all right, I've had a little bit of a think about it, but tried not to get too bogged down. I've said the standard bandits are doing D6 damage, so they're using similar weapons like a dagger or something like that compared to the uh, halfling soldiers I'm with. And I've given them quite low stats. I've given them eights for strength and dexterity, six for will, 2 HP, so less than us, and an armour of 1. And then the bandit leader I've made a bit more powerful. He's doing D8 damage. I was thinking either... I was giving... I wanted to give him an advantage in either strength or dexterity. So everything is more than the standard bandits. But I've given the bandit leader 12 in dexterity... 10 in strength, 10 in will, a little bit more HP. So he's actually got more HP than us and the same armour as us. So we will see how this goes. All right, so I've had to have quite a lengthy break between the last bit that you watched and this bit. I think it's been a week. I think it's been exactly a week since I last filmed part of this video. And we've moved from being unseasonably cold where I live to ridiculously warm. So that is why I am not wearing a jumper and I was in the last bit. But try not to let that distract you from the climax of this adventure. Going into White Mound Tower to hopefully vanquish the bandits. Part of me thinks that because I've left it a week here, that my character is going to die very, very quickly. But that being said, I've had a little read of some of the rules in Cairn and noticed that we've got this mechanism called critical damage. So when damage reduces uh, HP below zero, that then decreases the strength of that individual by the amount remaining. So I suppose if our HP were 3, which it is, and we took 4 points of damage, our HP would be reduced to 0, and then our strength would go down by 1. And it is only when our strength gets to 0 that we would die. So we're going into... White Mound Tower, presumably with Storm and myself, Sybil, leading the way. And as we know, White Mound Tower is a three-level tower. So going into the first level, I'm going to assume that we have got at least one bandit there. And what I might do is just roll to see whether there is an additional bandit here. So let's see, is there more than one bandit on this level? Three. So three gives us a no but. So I guess that means there's only one bandit on this level, but maybe this bandit is asleep. So shall we say this bandit is asleep? Uh, they wake in time to engage us in combat, but that means that we have the upper hand going into this fight. So the way combat works is over a number of rounds. Each round lasts just a few seconds. Each character will have an action. Now ordinarily at the start of combat, each player character must make a deck save 
to see whether they go before their opponents. We do not need to do that because this particular bandit was having a quick nap and not doing his job of guarding the tower entrance. And so we're going to attack first. If multiple attackers tug at the same foe, roll all damage dice and keep the single highest result. Ah, okay. So our bandits have a strength of eight and now realize we have to reduce that eight to zero to, uh, to take them out. And we are, I believe, are we all using a D6 for damage? No, I'm using a D10. So Sybil, her um, battle axe gives her a D10. The other three are all attacking with daggers. So we are going to attack. Here we go. Let's see if we take out this bandit. We've got a four, a one, and a ten. A ten. I mean, that's going to immediately kill one bandit, right? That bandit is dead because the ten reduces the HP to zero and then reduces the strength to zero. That was a very lucky first hit. Fantastic. Okay, so I guess we will... Um, what about loot? Do we get to loot? Can we loot them later? It doesn't really say anything in the book. I mean, it's such a simple rule set that a lot of stuff you might find in other games might not be in here. But that's okay, we're not going to worry about loot, we're just going to go to the next level. And I'm going to ask, we've got two outstanding bandits and the bandit uh, king. I'm going to assume that the bandit leader is on the top floor. Are both of the bandits on this floor? Six, yes, and... So either we could give them the advantage and allow them to attack first... I guess we need to give them some kind of advantage for that and. So that's what I'm going to say, actually. I'm going to say yes, and they get to attack first. So there are four of us. So I am going to use a D8 to establish who gets attacked. One, two is going to be me. Three, four is going to be Storm. Five, six, seven, eight, one of the soldiers. Okay, so that's one of the soldiers getting attacked by these two bandits. I suppose I could split their attacks. I should do that really, shouldn't I? So one of the attack one of the bandits is going to attack one of the soldiers. And the other bandit is going to attack me. Right, and they are doing D6 damage. So the first one is the one who is attacking me. Ooh! <laughs> Okay, um, right, so I am, that sucks, doesn't it? So that's five points of damage, which means my HP is down to zero, and then I'm also going to take two points off my strength. That's very unfortunate. And then one of the soldiers is taking three points, so uh, soldier one is uh, down to HP zero. But then we get to attack back. So we've got four people. So I guess we'll split our attacks. Me and one of the uh, soldiers will attack the first bandit. Five, six. So we're going with the highest one, which is six. Which means that Bandit 1 in this room is going down to 0 HP and then 4 is rolling over to the strength, so going down to 4 strength. And then the other Bandit is being attacked by Storm and the other soldier. Ooh, not so good. 2 and 1, so Bandit 2 is going down to 0 HP, but strength is remaining on 8. 
That is a round of combat. Okay, so you have to declare what characters are doing before dice are rolled. I guess I'm keeping this quite straightforward. We're just attacking, essentially. I'm not doing anything, uh, any crazy manoeuvres or anything like that. Oh, we've been forgetting about armour. That's, uh, hmm. What should I do about that? Because that makes a big difference, doesn't it? Because my armour's two. The soldier's armour is two. Oh, do you know what? It's so warm here, my brain can't really backpedal that. So it looks like I just forgot about armour. We'll remember about armour from here on in. Now, in this round, we need to make, or I need to make, a dex save to see who acts first. Now, I could do a dex save for each of the characters, but I think I'm going to do a dex save just for um, my main character, for Sybil, and then that will dictate the uh, the order for the whole party. We'll, we'll work it as a whole party thing, I think. So we're going to be rolling a d20, and we are trying to roll equal to or under our ability score. And that's a dex, so we're trying to roll equal to or less than 12. 8, that is a success, which means we go first. We're going to do the same split as last time. Me and one of the soldiers will attack one of the bandits. The first bandit, bandit one. Oh, that's not great, is it? So three is our best shot there. Which means bandit one is going to go down to one point of strength. And then the other bandit is going to be attacked by the soldier and Storm. Four. Little bit better. So that's going to take... Bandit 2 down to 4 strength. And on to another round of combat. So let's see who's going first. Ooh, 12. That is 12 or under, our dexterity. Which means we are going first. So this time, I think we'll switch over. Storm and the soldier will attack bandit number 1. I mean, they only need to do 1 point of damage. I'm still forgetting armour, aren't I? Still forgetting armour. Okay. But... He's dead, and then um, we'll we'll remember armor for this guy. I know it doesn't uh, make much of a difference now, but hey ho! Oh, it does make a difference. Uh, three is our best score. Less one because of the armor, which means only two points of damage. So this bandit is uh, remaining. So I wonder whether this bandit is now going to retreat up a floor to warn the leader of what is happening. So let's find out. Is the bandit going to try and run away? Six, yes. And uh, so he's running away and he's yelling uh, for the bandit leader to let him know that shit is going down right now in the tower, lower down in the tower. Now, to successfully run away, he needs to do a dexterity roll, which is eight or less. Good luck, bandit. Twelve, fail. So he trips up as he's trying to run away and uh, gives us an opportunity to finish him off. So now it's all of us attacking the one guy. And six, one of the halfling soldiers successfully lands a hit and finishes him off. Which means we've just got the leader left. Now I'm thinking that because we have finished off all the bandits and we're looking pretty good, we're looking pretty hard, maybe the bandit leader could be convinced to tactfully retreat from the tower. Maybe he'll know that the game is up and he doesn't stand much of a chance. So we're going to go up to the final level. We're going to confront the bandit leader and we're going to say to him, we've cleared this tower out, all of your bandits are dead. Maybe it's time you, you know, 
made like a tree and leaved. Leaved? Left. Make like a tree and get out of here. Now, my will is only seven, so there's not much of a chance that we're going to be able to convince him to do this. Thirteen. No. Not interested. And not only is he not interested, because the other bandit shouted up at him, he's ready for us and he gets to attack first. So who's he going to attack? Six. That is the soldier. The soldier one that's already been attacked. Now the bandit leader has got a slightly better weapon. He's doing D8 damage. How much damage is he doing? Four less two armor so two damage so taking the strength of soldier number one down to eight then it's our turn to attack so that is going to be d10 for me d6 for the other three. Oh, and we have done 10 points of damage there fantastic news less two for the armor i'm remembering the armor now which means it's eight points of damage so hp is going down to zero and then six is rolling over to the strength which means i think that he's down to four points of strength now let's see uh are we going to go first in the second round of combat trying to roll under 12 12 or under nine that is a success so we're attacking first 10 again that's some pretty lucky rolling sybil we're not used to lucky rolling like that on this channel so the bandit leader has been defeated hooray all right there we go combat over i guess the party will hobble back down um shall we do a quick search surely we should do a quick search I mean, this is um, the wizard's tower, the gnome wizard's tower. So we can't really search the tower for loot, but we could search the body. Is there any loot on the bandit leader? Six. Yes, and. My goodness. What have we got on here? We've got some special items. We've got mundane items, special items, and magical item effects. So I'm going to say yes, and not only does the bandit leader have some money also we're going to get some kind of special item so i'm just having a look at the gear and equipment to see how expensive stuff is and stuff is quite expensive all the costs here are in gold and we started with um just some silver i think each gold piece is equivalent to 10 silver pieces so our 10 silver could buy us some soap for example. So I'm going to say that there is D6 gold on the bandit leader, bearing in mind that we're hopeful that the gnome will also give us some money. One. Brilliant. One gold. So that's going to take us up to 22 silver. I guess I'll record all my money in silver. And what item are we going to get? So we've got special items. Ah, it's a D66 table. That's cool. 51. Ink. And we can give the ink a magical effect, I guess. I'm not really sure how this is working. 56. Health. I'm not sure about that. I'm going to give myself one more roll. 61. Hole. What does that mean? Ink hole. Well, I think that to me sounds like some ink that when you paint it on something, creates a magical hole that you can reach through. Could be handy. So after that, our character is going to head down to the ground floor probably call out to the wizard, the gnomish wizard, whose tower we have liberated, and uh, let him know that uh, job's done. Job's done, Duncan. Duncan, the gnome magician. Are you going to reward us? I would say automatic reward. Automatic reward, 
And it's going to be D10 gold, because he's quite wealthy. Ten. Fantastic. That's more like it. So we're up to 122 silver, and we're in a pretty good place. So I think that we might leave it there for the time being. We're still in the tower, and uh, yeah, we've cleared it out. A fairly successful first little combat quest there, I think. Not too scary. We took some damage, but we did not perish. Uh, yeah, it was all right. I quite enjoyed it. There we go. I might leave it here for one sheet adventure, unless there's some outcry and uh, you really want to see some more, in which case I'll film another one. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like this carried on for a little bit longer. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did. Thank you very much to Perplexing Ruins for making this game and making it pay what you want. I would, of course, encourage you, if you want to get yourself a copy, to uh, make some small donation to the creator when you purchase this game on itch.io. Definitely worth doing, especially as Perplexing Ruins has made it clear to me that he intends to continue to support this game. As I said at the start of the video, the Cairn version is no longer um, up on there, but as soon as Cairn 2nd Edition comes out, he intends to uh, create a Cairn-specific sheet that will also have Cairn-specific monsters, because these don't quite work for Cairn, I don't think. And uh, so, yeah, if you uh, get on board now on itch.io, then you'll be updated with updates and you'll get those as part of your original purchase definitely worth checking out. But I hope you enjoyed this one, folks. Thank you very much for joining me on this adventure. Join me for another one again soon, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.